Chad, um, what uh, what's your reaction to everything that's happened over the last 48 hours, and what are your plans going forward now? Obviously, it's it's a lot. It's a lot to process. Um, trying to to manage um, everything that's take, taking place, um, and, and then do it quickly. Trying to prepare for the game, so it's 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 just a lot on the plate for a short amount of time. Um, but it, it is what it is. It's it's this business, and you have to move on quickly and. Um, Essentially, we've we've turned our focus towards New England and how we go about beating them. How is your um, how are, how is your experiences the last year and a half with Anon shaped uh, your plans now going forward? Do you foresee changes in the way you play, or this is the this is the style you going to play? I think it's impossible to say at this point. Um, Obviously, it just happened, so we're we're in a mode where we're playing a certain way, and um, it would be uber difficult to change that in in a day or two. But uh, we'll see how we go. You know, I think we've been playing well. We're creating a lot of chances. Um, so the plan is to continue to do that. Just find a way to manage games a little bit better and and get results. How would you characterize sort of the? Temperature of the team right now, obviously, it can be, you know, from kind of a traumatic, huge change to go through. Obviously, things happen in the last couple of days. I think for the most part, they just want to get out on the field and and get after it again. Uh, games, especially if you can get results, um, winning solves a lot. So I, I think that's where they're at. They want to get out there. They want to prove themselves. They want to um, focus on moving forward and and say, this is who we are, and uh, we're a good team, and, and I, uh, they believe that. Do you, um, uh, obviously when there's a coaching change, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of emotions, there's a lot of, um, you know, I don't know, second guessing, a lot of, a lot of things happen. How do, you, how do you manage that part of it? Beyond preparing for a, for a yeah, match. that that's the difficult part of yesterday and today. There's a lot of unpacking of stuff, and you know, obviously, if you're a guy that's not in the lineup, uh, you you want the new coach's ear, the guy that's making the final call, and basically, I'm trying to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with everybody. So you know, some of those conversations are longer with certain guys than others, but uh, on every staff. Every coach still has their own opinions about players and how you play and different little tweaks and, and this and that. So um, that's the difficulty of yesterday and today is just finding enough time to get everything in, communicate, hey, this is where we're at, this is where we're going for this week. And um, I think once we get to the game, we'll exhale and, and like I said, be able to just get after and compete and, and then Next week, we'll have a little bit more time to, to process everything. It's interesting to see Nico Frutos staying. Uh, obviously, sort of a through line from Ernan's staff to yours, uh, you know, with the Ernan brought up here. Um, how would you characterize your relationship with him, and uh, what do you think his head is at as well? Uh, our relationship's excellent. Um, I think we see a lot of things in the same way, which I, I think is great, but I think we also see some things in different ways which I think is really good just because it's complimentary. You, you want to have different views. You want to um, not always be in the same headspace. So, so to have a different thought process with things I, I think is great. So I, I think we're very complimentary of each other. I think we can feed off of each other. Um, I know it's difficult for him, you know, maybe even more so than for Hernan because there's an internal struggle of uh, loyalty, you know, I, I felt it when when Ben left. It's it's a really traumatizing thing, especially when it's someone you're that close with. So I I really get it. And then add on top of it, he's brought a family from Belgium, and you know that's that's scary for for the family. So I um, I'm really happy that he's staying, and and I, I think we'll be able to serve each other well, and and hopefully serve the team well.
the way the club's been playing under Losada, um, by all accounts, you guys don't entirely want to sort of abandon that. Um, it's been entertaining to watch, I think, for fans, observers. Um, what do you make of what the club might be like stylistically going forward, how it might be different the same than the Trevor Nance philosophy? Same is, is what I said to Steven. I, yeah. For right now, I don't see it changing a whole lot. Like I said, I, I think we're playing well. I think we're creating chances. Um, I think we easily could have won every game this year. On the other side of it, we could have lost every game this year. So that's, you know, that's what this league is. The margin for error is very thin, but uh, um, as of right now, it's, it's all ahead full steam. On, on, a per okay. on, a, on a personal note for you, do you feel like, uh, I mean, this is an opportunity for you. Do you feel like this is, is perhaps an audition move, moving forward? Of course. You know, and, and I've gone through that before. Um, it, it's a different, there's a different air to it this time. Last time it was at the very end of the season, a short amount of time. This right now is obviously very early in the season. So, yeah, absolutely. I look at it as a huge opportunity. It's a huge responsibility, but uh, it's it's an honor to be able to do it at all. Were you... Um were you in the meeting this morning with Bernan with the players? Were you yes, that? yes. It, it was nice. We, as a staff, kind of all got to say goodbye to him beforehand, and then uh, we had him with the entire team. But uh, you know, there's always a, a real human element to everything, and uh, it's difficult. It's always difficult. It, um, would you? You've been around for a while, but obviously, when you encounter new colleagues or coaches. You learn something from them. What did you learn from Renan over the last year, for? A lot of things with his system, but they're they're very simple things, and they're the things you see on the field. Like, okay, how do we speed things up defensively, and how do we get in their box as quickly as possible, and um, not complicate the thing, uh, the game. Um, and and I think it's a, a great philosophy, but. Uh, you're, you're going to hear from him plenty. Uh, he's going to have plenty of coaching opportunities. He has a great mind for the game. He's a fantastic person. Um, you know, soccer world is such a, a small world. And um, even we talked about it with players. Like, it's, it's just important to soak up every bit of what you can because you never know what you're coming across, who you're coming across. And, and there are just so many global lines to it that uh, – you can learn not only with regards to soccer, but just with regards to people and the understanding of people from around the world. Having said all that, where, where do you think things went wrong? Um, I'd say it's probably a better question for management and ownership rather than me field that. Mm -hmm. Got it. What, do you, what was your message uh, to the players during this transition? To keep the focus on one game. Let's go about winning one game. Um, again, I, I feel like we're doing a lot of things right. Um, we've given up three set-piece goals in the, in the last three games. We need to eliminate that. But um, don't look anywhere beyond this game. We, we start with this game. We find a way to win this game. We keep doing what we're doing, create chances. Um, and, and I think the smaller we can keep our focus in on one thing, the easier it is. And like I said, once we finish this game, we can uh, kind of exhale and, and then talk about more broad things. But right now, that's, that's where everything is focused. Is that, we can take some online questions now. Great, thanks, Sam. We're going to Dave Johnson first. Dave. Hey Chad, how you doing? Good, how are you Dave? Good, uh, you know obviously a couple of years ago you're in this situation. I know, you know from my life experience when I get a, a chance to be in a uh, situation and, and I, lay, I learn a lot and then when I get that next chance I, I apply that. Is there anything you took from uh, being in charge a couple of years ago that, that you walked away from and said alright the next time regardless of the circumstances that I'm faced with, you know, I learned this, uh, I need to do more of this or less of that. Uh, I guess the simple question is, is, do you have learning? This is not your first time doing this, and now do you feel better prepared this time? Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think, um, again, any situation you can be put into, 
and, and probably uncomfortable situations in, in particular are, are going to grow you as a person. Um, it is a completely different situation this time because like I said, last time it was at the end of the year. Last time we barely had enough healthy players to field a team and uh, you had a ton of season ending injuries at that time. This time that's not the case and there's a, a lot of season to be played and and i know you know there's a lot of things that yeah i definitely learned from the last time and want to incorporate um and i, I look forward to get to do that over a course of time you know not just a month not just a, a quick snap of the fingers because it takes time and it, it is a process but uh i'm i'm really looking forward to it and i'm super excited about it We'll go back to David. Yeah, we live in a, a podcast world, so obviously you know, Julian uh, shared some thoughts. Yes, he sounded like still very a confident uh, player. Uh, this could be a, such a traumatic time. Is that your sense that this team still believes in itself? Absolutely. I, I think this team truly believes that they're a playoff team with without question. And. Um, and I think if, if you went around the room, almost, not almost, every guy would, would say, absolutely, we have full confidence, we have full confidence in our group, and I, I think you'll see that on the field. I think they'll express that. What about Jason Anderson? Hi, Jed, thanks for speaking with us today. Um, I just wanted to ask one question on um, going, going from an assistant to a head coach, obviously, the dynamic for you changes uh, quite a bit once you move into that role within the coaching staff. I was wondering, I know it's been, you know, 24 hours or so, but how do you feel like you have to adapt uh, to that change for you? Um, I think you, you, you just have to have trust. You have to have trust in the people around you. You have to be willing to delegate uh, certain responsibilities and know that uh, the people you've surrounded yourself with are, are going to do an excellent job and and I truly believe that um, you know you have the final say you know you're making the final decision now and obviously there's a lot more responsibility that goes with that and uh, that's just what it is that that's the biggest difference for me be between being a head coach and an assistant coach is, is the, the buck start, stops with you. So um, you know there's some pressures to that. You know there's some things that come along with that that are a little bit intimidating, but uh, that that's our game. That's uh, That pressure or however you perceive it is uh, a privilege to be able to have. So. Um, I look forward to having to make big decisions. I look forward to having to be in the moments and, and hopefully get a lot of those right due to my experience with the team and, and my experience within the league and, and, and kind of knowing what a lot of that looks like. Final question, Chad, we'll go to John Hoffman. John. We have a few. Uh, Chad, thanks for taking the time. I'm going to follow off, off of uh, Dave's question. Uh, sort of about Julian's podcast appearance yesterday. You've already been asked how you expect things to change on the field. It's a hard question to make, particularly 24 hours, as we do with the game this weekend. Uh, but there were some questions that were brought up by Julian. Do you have plans to change things off the field, either about expectations that the players have from management or about sort of the way that they have to comport themselves uh, off the field? It's a good question. Um, for me, I, I want the guys to enjoy what they're doing. I want them to come to work and have fun and look at it as an opportunity, not as a job. I, I think for for a few of them, it, it's at times things were becoming a little difficult just in feeling have to-ish rather than get to-ish. Um, and, and I think um, I want to get them in the mindset of, hey, I, I get to go out there and do this. This is my living. This is a such an opportunity that so many people would, you know, would want to be doing with their life. And um, I think a few of them that 
direction or that perspective was was maybe not there and and i want to get them all in the headspace of i can't wait to get to work today i can't wait to get on the field i can't wait to be around my teammates around my coach um because i do think happy people perform um with just you know more zest for life so um that's that's the headspace i want to get them into